We bought a prearranged funeral, to our knowledge. We bought the plot, we bought a plaque, we bought the urns, and we paid for the cremations. They said, one phone call, we come get you, and it's done. It's every, you don't have to worry about nothing. But how can you tell somebody, like, your kids and sitting around a table and they tell you <laughs> you didn't pay enough we need more <laughs> and for him to be well taken care of you have to pay more <laughs> but Jim and I thought we paid <laughs> what was necessary at the time I don't care if it's 50 years later it doesn't matter a rose is still a rose a casket is still a casket it, and that money is supposed to be earning interest so that you are able to afford the, the, all of those items yeah. later on, when, even when the prices have gone up. That's yeah. the whole point, right? That's what you would think. Where did all the money go that was invested nearly 30 years ago? The man said it went towards um, mowing the lawn and maintenance, groundkeeping maintenance, basically. In the end, the total fee for the added expenses that were proposed to you was close to $5,000 yes. on top of your original investment. Yes. What did you think when you heard that number? I thought, what did I pay for? Like, why tell me, sell me all these things, and then when it comes time, sell me more. Tell me there's more. There shouldn't be no more. The consumer is at an extreme disadvantage. They don't know anything about it. The person in front of you knows everything about it. You can't possibly come out on the right side of that if you're in front of people who are motivated to sell you things that you don't need. So there are retailers sure. selling these things. Sure. Are, we, are we allowed to go? Absolutely. You sign a waiver, you come in, you inspect it, and um, you're welcome to use it. They, Funeral home will then in turn charge a casket and equipment fee, uh, which I believe to be maybe $600 or something like that for the use of the equipment at the funeral home. So that's sort of the way the funeral home will, will combat having lower end retailers, retailers sell caskets and products like that. Yeah. So that's how you guys, <laughs> strategy, <laughs> yes indeed. Embalming is not mandatory, although if you're having an open casket, I wouldn't do it. Um, especially post SARS, like years ago, if you remember. Not that any, anyone's loved one is diseased, you know, or contagious in but It's a, an opportunity to maximize profits for many. Then they told us we have to pay for a casket, and we said, but we're not having a funeral. We're just going to cremate it and take them. And the plywood box is $1,400. He goes, well, you have to do all this stuff because it's my job to tell you. And if you want to do anything different, you can go put them on ice and build your own casket. We, I was just like stunned. Didn't know what to say. They were there to nickel and dime us to get as much money as they could out of us. And it's tough to shop around in a situation like this when your father is downstairs in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. I didn't even think about shopping around. I... How does it happen? that I can walk out of a funeral home thinking that I've covered my funeral for my family, and I'm wrong. It's troubling that people feel that they're pressured into it. That's, that's too bad. I would hope that's not the case. Your family has asked for, effectively, a reimbursement. I think we should get a reimbursement because my mother paid for something they're not delivering. Paid for plots that my parents aren't sitting in, and they're there. Paying for plaques that aren't being made. Paying for urns that our parents aren't in. And that's all money that they've taken from my parents let us down essentially, and then just kept it. They're certainly entitled to, I would say, the majority of the money back. We were told that you folks were doing a story or something yeah. on us. I was just told that any anybody that was asking us to direct them to our, to Gary Carmichael at our head office. You know, if, if I get direction from him that it's okay to speak with you, I'm happy to do that, but I, I have not, so I apologize. Arbor Memorial declined interview requests from the Toronto Star and CBC Marketplace, but they did issue a written statement. It reads in part, 
We operate in a highly regulated industry and have a number of policies and procedures in place to meet all regulatory requirements. And Beyond Compliance commit to the highest standards of care and protection of our customers and employees. And we take the issues you have identified very seriously. We have zero tolerance for any behavior that may cause customers to feel pressured. If your dad were watching all this now, what would he say? He was the kind of person that was the least thing he wanted was people to worry about him. He hated that. And he would be upset. He'd be sad for us.